Uh, this next guy, it's gonna be a tough act to follow, but when I told him, I did. When I, when I told him I wanted to put him before Alex, I said, I said, you know what, this is a tough spot to fill. You're gonna be before one of the top speakers in the entire country, but I feel like you're the right guy for this. This guy missed out on A to B Con one, and he said, I never wanna miss another one again. And he's been such a big supporter. I think he's gone through six, seven speaker schools. He's a phenomenal speaker. He's only 22 years old, and he's speaking all around the country and he's about to deliver some serious value today. I need you to give it up for the guy who's the founder of Stop and Stare. I need you to give it up for the guy who's a podcast host of Walk to Wealth. I need you to give it up for one of my really, really good friends, John Mendes! Yeah. 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 You done. Thank you, which one's forward? This one? Yeah. Well, keep the round of applause going. Can you get a round of applause for Brandon for putting this together? Yeah. Woo! The whole yeah. team. Hey. All right, so before we get into this, I just want to start off by saying I didn't always have this beautiful, amazing curly head of hair that I have right now. Right? In fact, let me take you back in the time machine to eighth grade year. I used to have the buzz cut. I actually didn't know I had curly hair. In fact, when I went to the barber shop, I'd ask for my, my, my special. I didn't know what a, a taper or a fade was. I'd ask for a two on the top, one on the side. That was my go-to haircut every time I walked to the barbershop. One day, one of my boys walks into school. He's like, yo, John, see my cut? It's called a taper fade. Next time you go to the barbershop, ask your barber for a taper fade. He's going to hook you up. I'm like, all right, a fade. Copy. Wait a couple months to let my hair grow out. I have this weird, awkward fro. As I said, I didn't know my hair was curly, so my hair was still like, kind of like straight. Weird, my curls didn't form back then. And uh, it was like the first day of school all over again. I got this fresh haircut, I'm looking good. It's the night before I had my best outfit on. It was a red Abercrombie polo shirt. Listen, listen you feel me, right? Black cargo pants. Red Jordans on, you feel me? Right, red Jordans on, my best outfit in my closet. Laid that joint out, went to sleep, wake up the next morning, it's raining on the way to school. Put my hoodie on, made sure my hair got a little wet, it was drizzling. And I look in the bathroom mirror and all you see is like these weird little like half curls forming. I, they weren't curls curls, but like it wasn't picked out like I normally had it. And I'm just like, man, let me go in my backpack. I check, forgot my, my pick at home. So now I can't even pick out my hair to get back to normal. So I'm sad, I'm walking into, into my homeroom class, like kind of like this. I wasn't stacked at all, like Christian Perry mentioned earlier. I'm walking in kind of sad. <laughs> Thank God for friends, because all I hear is, okay, John, I see you. I was like, oh, what, you like the fit? And I was like, boom. From that point on, I was like, all right, I, I gotta go with the curls. I think they fill in the curls. And so that kind of birthed what we got going on right now. So fast forward a little bit, I went to my first ever conference called Keller Williams Family Reunion. And this is where the shirt came from. I genuinely hate when people touch my hair, but like, I also had a lot of hair, so it was kind of tempting to touch. I figured, what better way to go to my first conference ever than wearing an obnoxious shirt that I know was gonna be a conversation starter. And it worked. And so my slogan, stop and stare, just don't touch the hair, Eventually, I wanted to start a marketing agency because I was teaching social media classes, right? And Mendez Media wasn't taking, so now it's a double pun. Anyone who knows me from back then knows Stop and Stare Media comes from Stop and Stare, just don't touch the hair. But also, when you're creating content, you need people to stop the scroll and stare at your video so you can boost the engagement, you feel me? And so, my very first business was I was gonna do an agency, I'll teach the social media classes for free, and then I would get agency clients where I'll create their content for them. I just remember laying down in bed, because mind you, I have a podcast, I'm doing all my own content as well, and so I have to edit all my own videos. And I'm editing my first client's videos, and I was just sitting there miserable, like, this sucks. And so, that idea I ended up scrapping up. Fast forward a little bit now, this is January of 2023, and I joined my first ever paid business mastermind. And in there, my mentor, he has a course on how to use ChatGPT. Now at this time, no one was talking about ChatGPT, still brand new, so I did what any entrepreneur would do at that point in time. I used ChatGPT to create a webinar on how to use ChatGPT, <laughs> right? And ever since then, it stuck with me. And so 
that's why I firmly believe, right, the vehicle that all you guys need, no matter what business you're in, no matter what industry, the vehicle you guys all need to get from point A to point B is artificial intelligence. But I need you guys to commit to me. Right, you guys have been learning a lot all day. As I said, we've had tons of amazing speakers with tons of amazing information. I need you guys to commit that as soon as you know that AI is the key to help get you from point A to point B, that you'll go all in. Can you do that for me? Yes. All right. But well, what does it mean to go all in? Person on the left over here, they tried some decorations for Christmas. It wasn't all that good, right? Yeah. Person on the right, what's their light bill? What's that looking like? <laughs> this is what it looks like to go all in. Lady on the left, she just got her first pet cat. And it's crazy because Jen's dog is named Dexter. My cat is named Dexter as well. So I, I was like, small world. But this lady on the left got her first cat. Lady on the right, she's the cat lady. She went all in, <laughs> right? Another photo. This is what a boring conference looks like, right? Now we got A to B Con 1. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Now we got A to B Con 2. That's what it looks like to go all in. So I want you guys to all to repeat after me, because Tony Robbins says, in order to take the island, you have to burn the boat. So can you guys commit for me? Can you guys repeat after me? All right, repeat after me. I commit, I commit that as soon as I know, as as I know that, AI that AI is the key to go from point A to point B, I will go all in. All right, and we got that on camera. So anyone that lies to me next year, I'll be back, all right? We got this on camera. So a little bit about myself. My name is John Mendez. I've been teaching business owners and real estate agents from across the country all about how to leverage AI in their business to save themselves more time and make more profit. And so my goal for this presentation, for those of you guys who have already started using ChatGPT, this will help take it even further. This will help maximize the results that you are probably getting now. And then for those of you guys who've never used ChatGPT before, this will help you get you started. This will help break the barrier because a lot of times it can be daunting, especially if you're not tech savvy, right, to start using ChatGPT. So over the next five minutes, because I don't have too much time with you guys today, I'm going to teach you guys the number one tip to effectively use AI. Is that cool? Yes. All right, here's the tip. Secret number one, the race method, right? How to transform ChatGPT into a Swiss Army knife that you can use for everything, right? And here's how. I want you guys to write this down, the race method, right? R-A-C-E, write this down. Step number one, roll. Give ChatGPT a roll. So I was using ChatGPT when it first came out and the responses were pretty robotic. It wasn't personalized at all. And I started thinking, all right, well, there's not really any manual on how to use this, right? All the things that were available were made by developers for developers. So I was just in there testing stuff out. And I remember one day I was like, um, imagine you're a social media marketer, uh, create like a marketing plan or something. And then boom, ChatGPT said, okay, I'm now a social media marketer. And now all of his responses were now given to me in the frame of a social media marketer. And now very simply, ChatGPT started to provide me better responses. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. Let me get a little bit more creative. Imagine you are Dan Kennedy which is a big, old-school, direct response marketer. And all of a sudden, ChatGPT now started using the principles and methods that Dan Kennedy teaches in, his, in their responses. And that took it a little bit further. I was like, okay, well, Dan Kennedy, he's retired right now, and if I wanted to pay him for one-on-one -on -one coaching, I would have to spend like $100,000, some crazy, absurd number. So I told ChatGPT, imagine you're Dan Kennedy and I just paid you $100,000 for one-on-one -on -one consulting. What feedback, what suggestions, what you know, remarks would you make for this, at the time I was working on email, would you make to this email? Then not only did it rewrite the email for me, it actually broke down all the tweaks and changes that it made. So now I just got one-on-one -on -one consulting and I didn't have to pay anybody for it. All right, so that's just step number one, what is the role? Now fortunately for all you guys, step number two is pretty simple. What's the action, right? Be simple, be clear. This part, you don't want to get clever at all. Just tell ChatGPT, what do you want it to do? If it's a marketing campaign, it's a marketing campaign. If it's a content calendar, it's a content calendar. If it's just a response to email, write that down, right? So we got the role, then we got the action. Step number three is context. So ChatGPT is trained on like a trillion data points, some crazy absurd number that I can't even count to. 
right? With ChatGPT, even though it's trained on almost everything, it's not trained on you. And so you have to give it some context as to who you are, what you do, what your business is, who you help. So now its responses can be a lot more personalized. And so when you give ChatGPT the context, now all its responses are going to sound less robotic and cater to your specific business and your specific audience. Right? And then from there, we wrap that up with setting expectations. So imagine you went to a restaurant. And I'm going to use this analogy because I know we have dinner coming up soon, and most of you guys are probably hungry. So imagine you went to a restaurant. You sit down, your waiter comes over. Hey, what would you like to eat today? I would like a steak. OK. Now, in this scenario, the server doesn't ask you, how do you want the steak cooked? They just put in an order for a steak. Let's say you wanted a medium. Steak come back, it's well done. Now, unless you like to eat tires, no one orders a well done steak. <laughs> so now you're upset with the server because your steak isn't cooked. How do you like it? But did you give the server your expectation? You assumed. And a lot of people, when they use ChatGPT, they assume that because it's trained on so many things, it'll automatically understand what they're asking for. So write this down. This is, I type this whenever I write in a prompt to ChatGPT. One little simple line. Do you understand, question mark, right? Do you understand, question mark? If so, please provide an example. Do you understand, question mark? If so, please provide an example, right? So when you put this framework together, let me give you an example prompt. Let's say we are going with social media marketing, right? So anyone here know Gary Vee? Show of hands. All right, so imagine you are Gary Vee. That is the role. I want you to come up with a six-week marketing campaign right, to help let everyone know in Connecticut that there's an Amber Alert and all the highways are closed. <laughs> I work for the transportation agency in Connecticut, and I want to, all the civilians of Stanford to know that we're going to keep on blowing up your phone. I expect the report, the, the content calendar, to be nonstop for the next six weeks so that everyone will remember that there's an accident on the highway. <laughs> Do you understand? If so, please provide an example with the first piece of content. And just like that, ChatGPT will start spitting out a bunch of content ideas to annoy us with all these Amber Alerts and that there's an accident on 95 on exit 14 and 15. Right? That is the framework, role, action, context, expectation. Now, I don't have much time with you guys today, so I'm actually doing a free ChatGPT workshop on Wednesday this upcoming week. So scan this QR code, right, and make it quick because I don't got too much time, right? So hurry up, pull out your phone, scan this QR code. I'm doing a free workshop where I'm going to break this down in more depth, but because I don't have as much time, we're going to make this quick, right? Scan that. Let's get to it. Boom. All right, I seen Carl getting up. So Carl, you got, a, you got it? All right, we got it, we got it. I just make it short, Carl. I just want to make sure with you, right? So that is the framework. Roll. Action, context, expectation. Now, when you master this framework, you'll be able to use ChatGPT for whatever you can imagine. This is just a random list, right? And I don't want you to take a photo of this list because this list isn't going to help you, right? <laughs> Knowing the framework and then how to apply it to everything on this list, that's how you're going to maximize the use. For example, uh, video script. Imagine you are a social media marketer. Right? I want you to create a video script for me on a topic. Let's say I help business owners um, start their coaching programs. Right? I'm a coach. That helps coaches. I expect the video scripts to be 120 words or less. Do you understand? If so, please provide an example with the first script. Boom. And you can take that race framework and apply it to everything you see here. Now, I came up with this list in like two minutes. Right? I didn't have much time. But honestly, I wouldn't have enough space on the screen to list out everything ChatGPT can help you guys out with in your business. Right. So I want you guys to, to remember this one last thing. I want you to leave you guys all with this. Is that no matter what you hear in the media, no matter what News 12 tell you, or CBN, or ABC, or whatever these major media outlets tell you, but no matter what headline you hear about AI apocalypse or coming for your jobs or whatever, AI won't replace you. Someone using AI will. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, if you just go out that door and give him the mic, yeah. um, I'll take this.